Daniel chapter 9, verse 12. And what we left off is Daniel's prayer. And we've been looking at Daniel's prayer to what churches want in a revival. As I said, this prayer is not going to happen in your average church. There is repentance. There is confession. There is acknowledge of sin. There is, we're not listening to your word. We're not listening to the men of God you sent us. We are evil. We are wicked. You are merciful. You are great. We're not. And yet, again, I speak of the Baptist churches because I'm Baptist. We speak, you know, we want this revival. We want this revival. But we don't want to repent. We don't want the sackcloth. We don't want the ashes. And we don't want the fast. And we want everything to be hunky-dory, great, and wonderful. We want God to bless us. And yet the closer we are to God is when we are in the valley. The church did not grow in the book of Acts unless there was a persecution. When there's a persecution, the church grew and sought the Lord. And when it had peace, you know, these pastors, I know some of these pastors, we want that 5,000 in the early book of Acts. Yeah, they were persecuted, they were beaten. And when they got saved, they were ostracized from the, from, from the community. That the fact is, the mission church had to send money to the home church because the Jews that got saved lost their job, lost their family. And we pick up in verse 12 of Daniel 9, and he has confirmed his words. God has confirmed his word. God has confirmed his word today in the King James 1611 Bible. And churches out there, well, we got our own word. We got this initial two letters and a V. I, mean, I know a pastor that doesn't even go up with the Bible. Goes up with a notebook. I thought it used to be bad when you go to church and the church people didn't bring a Bible. And they didn't open up the pew Bible. You got a pastor that doesn't even bring his Bible. And the congregation brings whatever Bible they want to bring. That's sad. The Bible says in the book of Psalms to the fact is I'm not going to quote it exactly, but you know, seven times has the word of God been purified. And you can go back and check those dates and those errors to the King James 1611 Bible. There have been no revivals of these modern Bibles. They've been under the King James. The Geneva and King James Bible went all over the world in exploration. What has he spake against us? Again, you know, like I said, have you ever asked God, what is between you and God hindering your fellowship? What sins? Against our judges. Right now they're looking at, at a person for the Supreme Court. It's not what her qualification is because she's a, she's a race, a color of people. She'll be the first black woman on the... Wait, wait, let's forget about the first black woman. What's her conduct to God? What is her attitude to God? What is her Bible reading? <coughs> what Bible does she read? What church does she go to? Is she saved? Does she know the Lord Jesus Christ? Does she get down and pray before her judgments? No, she's black, so, you know, we got to look at her. What God is, what, what, what the Holy Spirit through Daniel's prayer is, and, and there are judges in Babylon, they're, they're the Babylonian judges, and there's the Jewish judges, and he says, you know what, they're not doing right. And the judges in America, they're not doing right, they're taking bribes, oh, you're a big company, we'll let you go. Oh, you're, you're a football star, all right, you can get off. An athlete, we'll give you a little slap on the wrist. An uh, actress, a, a, a singer and all that. You know, it is a law 
And I know a couple of people's going to jail for writing bad checks, rubber checks. And every single day in America, she's writing bad checks, rubber checks. By bringing upon us a great evil. Listen, the consequences, the, the, the stuff that's going on, the judgments that's happening is God because of sin. He wants you to repent. He wants your attention. He wants Christians to go out there and preach the gospel. But they're, the, the heathen are not going to know the ways because the Christians ain't telling you about Jesus. And the Christians, as far as COVID-19, closing the church doors was not what God wanted you to do. He wanted you to get in that pulpit with a King James Bible and preach about sin. And get in ring. It's sorry, the fact is, you, you may have churches get out there and the pastor may have, you know, a great intention about a revival. And as far as the congregation, they don't know what a revival is. Some may not even know what to do with their sins. There are people out there who don't even know how to be saved. And they have, may have a Christian in the next cubicle. In the same driving car to work. COVID-19 and the, and, the, and the war in Russia and, and all these natural disasters is God saying you have sinned against me, get right. For under the whole heaven, that's everywhere. And Daniel didn't know about the Native Americans. He didn't know about the Mexicans. He didn't know about the Incas. Have not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. And, and what makes Jerusalem better is God can send prophet after prophet after. How many, how many, how many prophets did God send into Sodom and Gomorrah? He sent two angels and it brought out four people. Three of them made it. In the time of the great flood, and this looks like this is going to be a part three. In the great flood of Noah. How many did God send out? He, and Noah stood maybe in the, on that ark. God, Noah stood on the wood pile. Noah stood on a, 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 I don't know what he stood on. But the Bible tells us he preached. He says, you see that door? You go through that door for salvation because it's going to rain. God told me. Eight people got in that ark. The Bible says that Enoch preached about the coming of the Lord. And I know for sure. He didn't get many people. Jesus Christ. Who is God. Who was the perfect one. Without sin. Loved everybody. Prayed for everybody. Healed who need to be healed. Took out the devils. Of the ones who had devils. Gave sight to those who are blind. He made them be able to hear who were deaf. And at the cross. I know the women were there. One disciple. God didn't come to America like the, like the morons say. He went to Jerusalem. And they killed him outside the gates of Jerusalem. Never in the world has God ever been on the streets preaching and died in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the capital of the Jews where God was to meet them in that building now destroyed in Daniel's time. Why? Because they had in every street, they had their idols, they had the groves, every place they had their, their church buildings. Their little altars, their trees, their high places. They even had them in the temple. And they preached against it. And, and they preached against the, the Christmas tree. They preached against the, the, the queen of heaven. And what do we have in the churches today? We have the Christmas tree. We have the Esther. We have the queen of heaven. We have the Christmas. We have the Halloween. And they may be under other names. And we got all our welcome. And I'm telling you right now, on 
2022, you need to open up the book of Jeremiah. You need to study it. I said last night when we studied earlier, there was a golden image. Nebuchadnezzar said, all that will bow down when the music plays. Three men stood up. Only three men. Only eight got in that ark. Only um, three got into, into the cave. That's all I'm Gomorrah. As is written in the law of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. What we're reading about, what Daniel's talking he knows the law. He was handed the book of Jeremiah 9, 1, 2, 3. All this evil's come upon us, the Jews, me included, as Daniel saying. The law spoke about, go back and read. There's one whole, there's a chapter in Deuteronomy. I'll bless you, I'll bless you, I'll bless you, I'll bless you. But if you don't do it right, I'm going to curse you. I'm going to curse you. I'm going to seven times for your sin. And you still get seven more times. And if you, seven more times for your I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. One of the longest chapters. Yet, made we not our prayers before the Lord our God. They didn't pray. You realize we read about Ezekiel, we read about Daniel, I mean, uh, uh, Jeremiah. Daniel says no one prayed. Oh, there were people that prayed. Hail Mary, full of grapes. Our Father who art there. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. How I got to put water under you. They say we don't bow down before you, but I got to put water. And I got to pick up those gifts when Jesus Christ is the gift. They were praying to the gods. They weren't praying to the Lord, our God. There's a place in the, in the, in the CEV Bible. That's in capital L, small O, small R, small D. That we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. You're not going to understand the truth. You're not going to get into the word of God if you are in iniquity and you're not praying to the Lord God. You say, well, you know, we pray. You're praying to the bubblegum God. And when you put your quarter in, you want that yellow bubblegum. And you get all upset, I get all upset when you put your quarter and you turn it and no bubble gum comes out. Or you get a green one. You mm, ain't green. Or, you know, you go up to, you put your, your prayer cord in it and you get that yellow bubble gum and everybody around you is supposed to get what color they want. Well, we don't serve a yellow bubble gum God. We serve a holy and righteous God. We want, we want, we want, James said, hey, it may be because it's lustful. And you may not receive because you, you did not ask. Oh, I asked. You didn't ask the Lord God. You may have asked the God, small g-o-d. You may have asked Jesus, a small G-E-S-U-S. -E you know, there are other Jesuses out there. You want to go to Mexico? Their names is called Jesus. I witnessed to men in prison. Jesus. That means Jesus. That's not the Jesus that's God. And Daniel says, listen, our prayer is not we want, we want, we want. It's we've committed iniquity. We want the truth. Now, they keep saying, God bless America, God bless America. Not with the sin she's in. Therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil, the wickedness of man. And evil is a word that has a condemnation. Has, evil can be a sin. And let me give you the best illustration I've ever given. 
You can get yourself alcohol and you can indulge yourself in alcohol. The alcohol is sin. We are not to be drinking that as Christians. Alcohol becomes a sin. All right. So evil can be a sin. God watches upon the evil. Now, another aspect of evil may not be sin. There's a, there, there's a couple girls or a couple boys, and, and they're coming home from work or they're, they're, they're coming home from church, whatever. They're driving down the road, and a drunk driver smacks them head on, and they die. They didn't drink the alcohol. They didn't commit the sin of alcohol. The, the DUI guy committed the alcohol. They died. The evil is they died from the sin of alcohol, though they didn't do nothing. They didn't sin with alcohol. Evil can be a consequence of sin. And for the fact is, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. You smoke cigarettes, that's evil. You die lung cancer from smoking, that's evil to sin and evil to consequence. And what God is looking at, he's looking at the evil of sin and the consequences of sin. Oh, oh Lord God, the doctor says I got cancer, I got lung cancer. Oh Lord God, my liver, is, I got the cirrhosis of the liver. Because you were involved in sin and you didn't stop it. Oh, Lord God, aren't you going to save me? Aren't you going to heal me? Maybe not. Oh, Lord, I chopped off my finger. Look at that. Is it going to grow back? No. Lord, I, I, I'm 40 years old, and I did something when I was a teenager, and I, I'm suffering now. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that, he shall also reap. You know what the problem with a lot of these stars, actors, and singers, when they get old, you know why they commit suicide? Because the ships are coming in. And it's the cargo. It's the evil from sin. That's, that's where this whole world's coming from now, right now. It's, all the it's the evil. It's our sin. Our sin. I'm included. I'm not without sin. And then it's the consequences of sin. America, if the Lord tarries, he, she is going to reap the very fact is you are murdering babies and you can do it legally. And we're going to even have worse. That Pretty soon they'll make it legal that, uh, you know, you don't know what sex you are. We make it legal in this country. If you're a murderer, we'll put you on death row, but we'll never... Take your life. You know what's happening right now? The prisons are overflowing and they're letting them out. And they find out when they let them out, they go out and do the same crimes. For the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You leave that word alone. If your Bible has capital L, small o, small r, small d, you burn that Bible with the flames of hell and brimstone. Because that's Jehovah God. The Lord our God is righteous in all his works. Well, what about the babies? What the, God didn't kill the babies. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They ate that fruit. They became sinners. And you die because of your sin. God warned Adam. You know, it's, it's so stupid that, that, that I'm cigarette packs. And I used to smoke. See, I don't know if you can see. I got the oxygen hose on right now. I got emphysema. I got COPD. And there's times I got to wear oxygen. It's my fault. They put on packs of cigarettes, and I remember reading, the Surgeon General warned that you're an idiot for doing this. Now, you may not have worried like that. I was told later on after I smoked, I, I was told those packs of cigarettes actually had images of what it does for your lungs and babies that were born from mothers that smoked. 
And they, they get this thing you know, on, on the alcohol cans and the bar, you know, drink sensibly and all that other nonsense. And then when you get when you get the race cars coming to Daytona B, the, the story, they race car, NASA, here's your Budweiser, here's your Bush beer. Oh, you're 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 promoting drinking and driving. Oh no, we want to do that. Then why do you got a race car on top of the beer? You're gonna pay for these sins. You will reap what you sow, or God will have to call up Judah. God will have to call up Israel. God will have to call up Edom. He had to call up Sodom and the neighboring cities and say, "I apologize to you guys." He ain't gonna apologize to them. Well, these people, God sends them to hell. No, He don't. You choose hell. God suffered and died that you may not go. God did all and absolutely everything he can to keep you from going to hell. When you go to hell, it's your fault. Don't you blame God. He's righteous. How is God righteous about me not going to hell? He suffered and died on that tree, and he sent somebody to come and tell me. So you mean an angel didn't visit you? They can't. And if an angel did visit me, he said, go see him. An angel can't tell you about what they don't know. They don't know about the God. God is righteous in all his way. All the hurricane. We're coming up to hurricane season. All them hurricanes, God's righteous. Get right. Get right. Get right. That man preaches in Daytona Beach. He's going to be preaching to Norman Beach for himself. You go listen to him and you do what he tells. No, we don't want his business. Get out of here. We should drop dead. All right, wipe my shoes. I'll pray for your soul, but I ain't going to pray for your business. I've been there in trouble with the law. I haven't been in trouble with the law for preaching the gospel here in Daytona Beach. God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. Today for the Christian, the Bible says you are to pray for your leaders. You are to respect our leaders. You are to honor our leaders. You're to obey our leaders. He's not my president. No, we rather have a guy who's involved with insurrection, pride, and a murder of somebody in that insurrection. Barabbas, how you doing? <laughs> Take Jesus and put him on the cross. You ain't gasoline prices. Oh, and gasoline. It's only going to get worse. Don't you realize you, the food in the grocery store is disappearing? Why is that happening? Because grocery stores, the restaurants, and Americans waste their food. You make pumpkin guns. You make watermelon guns. Oh, we're going to shoot watermelons. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Look how far it went. That's food. You're wasting it. And there are single mothers out there with children starving. I worked for, for a donut place, well-known donut place. I got in trouble for giving donuts to one of my employees with a mother, uh, with no husband, whatever reason, I don't know, it was none of my business. She had children. I was in trouble because I gave her donuts to go home with them. I was supposed to take those donuts and throw them in the dumpster. Gales Ferry, Connecticut. God's going to judge you for that. You realize how much food grocery stores throw out? I work for the grocery store. I work for the cashier. I work for the for the dairy. I work for the frozen food. I work for grocery. Don't you tell me. The apartment, apartment I didn't work was uh, the bakery and, and produce. You're going you're gonna to reap what you sow. And the Bible says you're supposed to help the poor people. I don't mean, here, here's a handout. Take a picture. Hey, hey look at me getting food. Hey, hey, take, 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 see the picture? Oh, Facebook. I help somebody. Look at me help somebody. Look at me get food. Look at that sports guy. He's at the soup kitchen. Would he be at the soup kitchen if it wasn't a camera? Well, look at this guy. Look, look at all the money he gives to this. Uh, yeah, Let, let's see his tax form. They may be doing and giving and working for purposes you don't realize they're doing it for. 
when we disobey God and I disobey God. We're not going to get the goodness of God. We're not going to get the blessings of God. Even though he's merciful and he's gracious. And now, O oh Lord, our God, <clears throat> God ain't going to bless you if, if, you're not his, if you're not his. America, one nation under God. Uh, is that the Catholic God? Is that the Baptist God? Is that the Protestant God? Is that the Mormon God? Is that the New Age God? Is that the trilling gods of India? Is that the, the Allah God of the Muslims? It, it, which God? Get yourself a big city like L.A. Or, or San Francisco or Chicago or any big major city, you pick one. You get the yellow pages and you open up the tag under churches and you tell me how many churches and denominations and records and buildings. And I'll tell you, that's the same thing that was going on in the book of Jeremiah and that we have the book of Jeremiah on our website. You can go listen to it. Thou hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand. God, Jesus Christ, has brought me out of the world. He's brought me out of hell by his mighty hand being nailed to that cross. And has gotten thee renowned, renowned all, everybody. Everybody ought to know about God. Everybody ought to know about Jesus. Not now. You know, there's some Baptist churches, they don't know nothing. They know about a talking tomato and a talking carrot and, a, and a, a dancing cucumber, but they don't know anything about Jesus. They can't say, Jesus loves me, this I know. We don't open our Bible, it's so. Bunch of dancers on the platform. Listen to all the crap that our pastor allows. Yes. Somebody loves me. Yes, somebody loves me. I said a Bible verse and got my tootsie roll. But nobody has a Bible to read to me. I've been in enough churches. Don't you tell me from Connecticut to Florida. What's your testimony? April 21st, 1987, I knelt down in the coffee table, my grandma's living room with Joe Caswell, Joe Whitmore, a King James Bible, and I knelt down, I asked God, I asked Jesus Christ to save this wicked soul because I didn't want to go to hell. He saved my soul. I went to church the next day, raised my hand, stood up, and said, I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ yesterday. With my heart, I believe. With my mouth confessed, I went home and told my dad I was lost and going to hell. Dad, you're going to hell. I had two wives that died on me. I've been a widow twice. I've seen God extend their lives. Both my wives got to go home for one week before they went back to the hospital and died. They got one week to spend. One wife said, Listen, I want to go home and, and be with my husband. Home for one week and then she went back and died. That's a gracious, merciful God. I can tell you all the times that Satan wanted me dead. I should be dead today. Last year, this time, March, last year, 2021, you asked my daughter. I almost died twice. I had an infection in my body from my foot, and I had uh, uh, pneumonia. Severe. I had one time double pneumonia. I sat in my bedroom one day. I, 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 there's no breath. Get me to the hospital. Told my daughter. You're lucky you got them here. It was another time I had an infection in my foot a long time ago. I'm laying in bed. I got every blanket on the house on me. I got every electric blanket on high. My wife finally said, I ain't getting you no more. I'm shivering. I, I, I'm freezing. I, I, I got a temperature. They brought me to the hospital. He, he, how on earth is he still living? 
by the mercy of God. I was a little baby, New London, Connecticut, and it was winter. It was snowing. They didn't have snow plows that ran all the time. I had was a baby. I had the Hong Kong flu. I, I was I was sweating. I had a hard blood pressure. My God, my dad had to take me the longest way around to get me to the hospital. The hospital was down the street. You, you know, all the hills. You don't understand that in Florida. Connecticut, there's hills over kind of, and they get snow covered, and they get icy. You get to go all the way around, all the way around the beach. Got me in the house. Where they took me as a baby, my dad told me, and they soaked me in a bucket of ice water. He said, the baby ought to be dead. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Gardner's Lake, I almost drowned. And that, 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 that floating dock moved. God moved that floating dock. My hand reached out. That dock was there. It was not there before. By the mercy and grace of God. I am a sinner. I don't deserve it. But God said, that man, he's going to use his mouth for me, for my son. And pastors are going to hate him. And Christians are going to hate him. And the world's going to hate him. But he loves me. He uses his mouth for me. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm a sinner. I wouldn't tell you all my sins. I wouldn't tell you the sins before I was saved. Well, I'm still a sinner today. But I got a testimony. What's your testimony? As of this day, we have sinned. We have sinned. Let's hear that in the churches. I have sinned. You can't get a pardon without being guilty. I, I preached that, I taught that, in the many years I had the prison ministry. You can't be pardoned unless you're guilty. You know how America messes with that? You hear me? This is America. You know how America's, God bless America. No, you won't. Don't do it, God. Because at the end of the term of each president, the president pardons a list of group of people. And he violates the dictionary, the Webster's 1828 dictionary. You say, how does he do that? He pardons people who don't even think they're guilty. You can't get a pardon if you're not guilty. If the warden of the prison came walking in your cell and said, excuse me, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. I'm the warden of this prison. Well, how you doing, Mr. Warden? I got a paper right here. All I got to do is put the signature. I got the governor's signature right here. Are you guilty for the crimes that you did? Well, no, 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 no. You know, it, it wasn't me. Because, it, it, you, know, you know, I'm colored. And, and, you know, the judge was against me. And, you know, those, those bad cops, you know, they're just wicked. No, I'm not guilty. <laughs> no, sorry, you have a good day. Close the door. Met goes in the next cell. He goes, sir, how you doing? Mr. Jones, I'm the warden in this prison. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Are you guilty of the crimes that you're in here for? Mr. Warden, not only am I guilty of the crimes that I committed, I'm not going to tell you, but I'm guilty, bro. I should be in here for more. I've done more than what you caught me. I've done more than what that judge is. Take that paper, signs his name, hands it to you. You're pardoned. You're free. I came to Jesus Christ and Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a wicked, violent sinner. Jesus said, that's okay. That's what I'm looking for. What do you want? I want you to take me out of hell. I don't want to go to hell. I want to believe on you. Here it is. What's that? That's your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Guilty sinner. You know who you are now? You're a free. You're set free. And those sins are never to be remembered by God again. That's what God done to me. Because I'm guilty. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from us. I wonder what, I wonder what that Bible says in, in other Bibles. I wonder what the modern church does with that verse. I'm not a sinner. I'm a king. If I'm a Christian, can I continue to live in the sin that I am? You don't weep over your tears. You don't fight your tears. You don't argue with God about it. You say, God, I can't stop this sin. I'm tired of it. And there's something wrong with your, your life. Yeah, you're going to have that sin. That sin you're going to do, you're going to want to enjoy it sometime. And there's times you battle it, and there's times you do it, and you're like, oh, man, I'm tired of this. That's the Christian life. God leaves fleas on a dog to remind that dog you're a dog. You don't think you're a dog? You start scratching that flea. <laughs> yeah, you're saying you're a dog. 
You know, if God made us perfect right now, we would have no need for him. We wouldn't be listening to him. You know, there are more. Listen, I, listen I've been in a hospital. Myself, my wife, both, since 2003, 2002 with my daughter. I've been in a hospital every year. We talk to nurses, we talk to the doctors, we talk to patients, we witness. There are more prayers. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. I am saying this at 7.34 p.m. Uh, March 25th, 2022. You listen to me. There are more prayers in a hospital. And there are more tears in a hospital than a church. Than the church altar. Come to our altar. Come up to our altar. It ain't an altar when, when it's a hospital bed. It ain't an altar at a doctor's desk. I, I was in the hospital one time. And, uh, um, can't think of the name of it now. Back is hospital, Norris, Connecticut. They threatened the security on me and my two children. Because we were in a waiting room while my wife was getting... Um, Radiation therapy or treatment for her cancer. We were kneeling on the floor in, in the waiting room praying for her. And that hospital threatened to, to get security on us if the police if we didn't get up. We, I have sinned. We, I have done wickedly. O oh Lord, according to thy righteousness, it's not mine. I don't say my salvation because it's not mine. It's Jesus. All I did was ask him to save me. And I didn't know that was scripture the day I got saved. He told me, he says, you, you got to believe on the Lord Jesus to save. All right, I believe. You got to ask him. And the Lord save me. Get me out of hell. There is none righteous. No, not one, the Bible says. It's got to be God's righteousness. I beseech you. I beg you. I earnest to you. I desire as a man dying of hunger, wanting a loop from a bread. That woman who, who was a Gentile, her daughter was possessed with a devil. She sought the Lord. She didn't give up on the Lord. And then she got the Lord for him to say, wow, your faith. Go home, your daughter's healed. My child lies dead. Please, Lord. Let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem. Ezra and Nehemiah are going to go back. And they're going to rebuild. Then it's going to fall again because they take the Messiah and kill him. Thy holy mountain. Because of our sins and iniquity of our fathers. Jerusalem and I people have become a reproach, a joke, a byword. Hey, you see what happened to them? You see how mighty they look? That golden city now, now in Babylon. You know what a lot of people do with your Baptist church, sir? They laugh and they got Baptist jokes. I witnessed to many people. Well, yeah, you know, I was in the Baptist church, and the pastor ran off with the piano player. Well, you know, the, 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 the music director had a little thing with the little boys. Don't you point at the Catholics, it happens in your church, too. I, I, I went to a Baptist church, and, you know, I didn't know nothing. I, just, I was invited, I went in there, and I was wearing a bikini, and they got all upset. I get upset you were saved many years and you still were. But I mean, you just walked in and you're unsaved. Be my guess. I had the church and they offered the woman a, a, a blanket because, you know, they, her, the AC was on. It was cold. And they told us, we give you this. Are you feeling cold? Yeah. Or about us. Now, therefore, oh, oh, you know what I mean? It's two, two stupid movies. Oh, God. And oh, God, too. 
my filthy cigar smoking. I was gonna say a word of the a word of the world. I won't say it. It's in the Bible. That word I'm thinking about, but it has a whole different definition. You better not make fun of old God. I bet you there was a lot of old gods of Jews in Germany. I bet you there was a lot of old gods in the cabins of the Titanic. I bet you there was plenty of old gods with trapped miners under the ground. I bet you there was an old god in California with the fires. I guarantee there's a lot of old gods in a hospital room when that loved one is dying. You're sitting behind the, the doctor's desk and the doctor said, we got the test back, there ain't nothing we can do. Oh God. I don't know, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm, I'm going to and it's bad, I apologize, but they had a catheter in me and they took it out and... Uh, everything wasn't working properly. They had to go in there and open. And, oh my, I was like, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I wasn't taking his name in vain. I was like, help me. I'm in pain. Oh, Jesus. That's serious. There are people right now in Russia and Ukraine. Oh, God. And Allah ain't going to answer you. Mary ain't going to answer you. And all the gods of India ain't going to answer you. Stalin ain't going to answer you. Jehovah of the Old Testament and the law ain't going to answer you. It's got to be Jesus the Messiah. Now therefore, oh, our God, hear the prayer of thy servant. Daniel can say that. There are a lot of Baptists today. They pray. They're, act, they're not the servant of God. They don't do nothing for God. I let my light shine. Brother, your light has been dead for years. Change the batteries. And don't get the C's and the D's. Get the KJV. Plug that battery into your flashlight. Pew! And people be, wow. Yo, man. <laughs> Turn that down. There's some people that hate the word servant. You can't call God Lord if you don't serve him. And supplications. I'm supplicating to you, Lord. Because my life is suffocating. And cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary. He's going back to Moses. Did you see that? When Moses was with the people, he put a veil in his face. When he went into the sanctuary, he took the veil off. Did you see that? Daniel knew his Bible, and he didn't have a copy of the Bible. He had to remember what he was taught. Now, he maybe had something written that is desolate. Actually, the, the, the sanctuary in that is gone for the Lord's sake. Lord, fix up the things. Fix things up, not for me, but for you. I'm praying for a wife now, a third one. Not for me. That her and I can go out like I've done with Lisa and like I've done with Trey. We can both go out together, serve the Lord, and earn rewards and please the Lord together. That he will say to the both of us, well done. What's the Bible say? Well done, thou good and faithful. What? That word that people don't want. You're not going to get well done if you don't be a servant. And listen, it's a servitude. It's the only thing you can pray. You're in a you're in a nursing and you're stuck in a hospital, and the only thing you can do is pray. That's a servant. You're sacrificing time. 
Listen, if the only thing you can do is you can show up to church Sunday morning, sit in that pew and encourage the pastor. Hey, he's not. Pre Listen, I preached one time in the jail ministry. I went there and I only had two people show up. And one of the guys looked at me and said, well, like, you're going to go home? No one here. I said, no, we're, that, and we had a good old time, the three of us. And I told them, two or three gathered together, there's the Lord. I have had Bible study where there's been three people sitting at a picnic table, and we had fun, and we had learning. We had the King James Bible. <laughs> Sally, shut up about the King James Bible. No, I won't. That's my sword. I love my sword. Because my sword can cut and jab and googie and doobie and make you bleed. I posted my Facebook today. I wonder for some people. And one of the first posts I posted tomorrow. Ah, oh, beep. He's alive. <laughs> Wish to God kill him. Oh, no one would think that. Come down here to Farmer's Market and ask him. When I returned after being in the hospital after a year, they told me, I wish you, they say, I wish you died. I wish you never come back. I said, okay, fine. I'm not going to die. Dusted off my shoes and looking for someone else. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I remember, I remember my mom would say that something. Oh, my God. I think as a little boy, there's trouble somewhere. <laughs> A lot of times it was me. And I get into something, I come home, run from that door, mom, take a look at me. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, mom. I'm serious. You wouldn't believe the trouble I got into. Incline thy ear. You know, I have a guy that has an ear that listens. The statues, they got ears, but they don't listen. That's his, his songs. And here, open thy eyes. The statues got eyes, but they can't see, Psalm said. Behold our desolations, <clears throat> and the city which is called by thy name, destroyed. For we do not present our supplication before thee for our righteousness. Listen, we're, I, I'm not praying because I'm righteous. You know, as far as we know, we point out with Daniel. As far as we know, whatever, we don't know. We don't. But well, let's say for the circumstance, where was Daniel to speak for Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? Daniel was the second leader of the nation, or third. Now, I don't, we don't know, now, I'm, just, I'm just throwing the suggestion. Why didn't he, hey, Nebby, we got to have a talk somewhere quietly about Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't help those boys, you're going to be in trouble. You don't believe me? Bell Sides, I'm telling you right now, everything's going to end. You're wicked. Your father repented. And, and that guy went to bed drunk and, and didn't wake up the next morning. Oh, by the way, you know, we're getting victory over COVID-19. Things are starting to open up and everything. And they're actually starting to... But do you realize Bell Shiza, I'm going to say this now because I learned this today. Bell Shiza, before his nation was destroyed, he was drinking and having a wonderful, great party with everybody. Look at it. Go back. The guy was feasting and drinking, using the Lord's stuff, praising all the gods. And that night he died and Babylon fell. You know, you know how God would get America? We... We did it our way. God bless America. Oh, and God we trust. You know, we got in Florida and God we trust. And yet our governor says, you don't have to say gay. All right, God said, okay, I won't use the word gay, okay? I'll agree with you. I'll start using the word abomination, the biblical word. We'll move on. But for thy great mercies, and God has great mercies. We're going to get where I wanted to end yesterday. Oh, Lord, hear. Have you ever been to prayer with the Lord like that? I have. For a year now. And and devil comes up, and my flesh comes up. and Is anything too impossible for God? Yeah, he can't answer this prayer. There's nothing too hard for me. Uh, yes, there is, God. First of all, you're not listening to me. I've been there. 
I've been like Jeremiah and I've been like Job. Lord God, you take my life. Let's go. I'm done. I quit. Hey, Sally, you do well to be angry? Oh, I'd be done angry to death. Sally, what'd you do with that sword? I poked him. Put that sword in the sheath. Give me a second. Let me fix that up. I've been through the characters of the Bible. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. The Lord can't forgive if you don't confess. Oh, Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thy own sake. Lord, we take it for your blessing, for your honor and glory. Oh, my God. For thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Now, we got, we got a little bit over time, but I want you to go over to Jonah. The most unbelieved book of the Bible. Scholars don't believe it. It's a sea monster. I, you go check out my website, the PowerPoints, and the, and the perverted Bibles. You'll find out. Jonah chapter 3. And we'll take his message at the end of verse 3. Jonah 3 at the end of verse 3. Now watch this. Now Nineveh was a seeing great city three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. He cried and said, yet 40 days <clears throat> and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's an angry preacher. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaim a fast. Daniel, and put on sackcloth, Daniel, from the greatest of them, from the king, even to the least of them. You know, we don't read anything with Daniel converts. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh. By the king? You mean the King James Bible? Where there's word of a king, there's power. There is power, wonder working power in the blood. And the King James. <laughs> Need to add some words to that verse. Let's upset some people. Well, look, look, watch. He arose from the throne. He laid his robe from him. Covered him with sackcloth. Daniel. And sat in ashes. Daniel. He caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh. By a decree of the kings and nobles. Cyrus and Dyrus. You know, you know what Americans would complain right there? Church and stay. <laughs> you know what Nebuchadnezzar said? The God of Daniel, you better not mess with that God of Daniel. I'll take care of your house. You read, remember that in Daniel? We're in Jonah. Remember Daniel? Laid his robe and covered his sack off. And he caused it to be proclaimed to publish in Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Let neither man nor beast, <laughs> herd or flock, Taste anything. That's fasting. Let them not feed nor drink water. Fasting. That's Daniel. Daniel did not get the cows of Babylon and say, okay, you guys, you ain't eating and drinking. Bah, you too. This is repentance. And this God answered. This revival. They heard the preacher, though he was upset and angry like me. And they listened to him. And they acted like Daniel. And they prayed like Daniel. We'll keep on reading. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. That's prayer. Let them turn everyone from his evil way. There's repenting. 
from the violence that's in their hands. Repentance. And acknowledge their repentance. And acknowledge their sin. Who can tell if God would turn and repent and turn away his fierce anger? It is the judgment of God. It is the anger of God. We need to repent. We need to fast. We need to pray. We need to confess. God saw their works. They turned from their evil way. They repented and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them. And he did it not. Look at there's There's the response. I don't believe you're going to see that in 2022, 2023, 2024. I don't. Not a nation. You're not going to listen to a preacher because which preacher do you listen to? Which Bible do you honor? They're not the same. There's some people who listen to a woman preacher. The Bible says, no, 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 no. You got to have the right preacher. You got to have a God call preacher. You got to have a preacher with God's words. Even if it upsets you. And you got to do what Daniel did. You got to do what this king did. You got to do what he did in Babylon. You got to do what they did in Nineveh. And then God. But you know what the church age of the last is seeing? You know what? You know, people, we see the sun. We see the earthquake. And, and the, the, rap, no, the rapture has no sign. Except men will be lovers of themselves, apostasy, and all, and I, when, what Paul wrote to Timothy, and we don't have time to go there. That's the sign of the rapture, the failure of the church. And yet you say, we're rich. We're a great church, a great pastor. That defiles Revelation chapter 3. That's not repentance. That's pride, proud, and arrogance and a high head. You're not repenting, you're sinning.